things there. Um, it's always a comfort for the preacher to know that there's going to be good musicians and good music because it takes the pressure off the sermon. And it's even less pressure when there's not a sermon. So on this praise service day, we have a teaching service, teaching time, where we'll talk about the, the lessons for today. So that'll be part of our worship this morning too. So we have a couple, we've got a, one, we guess one guest, we'll say that Josh. Uh, Josh is here from Colorado Springs and he's playing a, a U-bass, a special instrument that we've never, is that the right word? Okay, <laughs> but it's not one we've had before in our, our praise team, so... Yeah, we're, we're very blessed to have that there. So thanks for being here, Josh. And a lot of guests here today, too. Welcome to you guests here in church, uh, as well as those who will be watching on YouTube uh, or Facebook later. I know I've got a good friend in, in uh, Pierce, Carolyn, that watches every week. Uh, I know there's several of you at the lake that are enjoying both the lake and worship today. So we are glad you're able to join us. And uh, as part of our uh, ministry planning, we came up with some new ideas for uh, helping our integrate our worship and uh, um, get back to semi-normal. What's normal is just sitting on a dryer, I know, but uh, in this post-COVID time, uh, instead of me doing opening prayer, we're going to do a time of sharing and saying hi to each other. And at the end of worship, instead of being ushered out, uh, you can leave at your convenience and maybe stop and stay and talk some more to your neighbor and get to see them there since there's not a lot of room in our narthex. So um, we hope that you'll take advantage of those opportunities uh, to uh, visit with one another and greet one another, and that will start right now. So I'd like you to stand and say hi to one another.
truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess, gracious God, that we groan not only because of sin in the world, but our failure to trust you for all that we need. We have not waited patiently. We have demanded reasons from you. We have sought to excuse ourselves. Yet you have given us the Spirit who intercedes for us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us to hope not in ourselves, but in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The promises of God are sure. One day creation will be set free from corruption. Your sins were taken to Christ's cross, where you were redeemed as God's beloved children. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And please be seated for our next song. Boy, I get to the curie after you be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> But we'll use through the curie spoken. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace and salvation from God above, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the sin sick world, growth in the church, and unity among its members, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, ourselves, and all who worship here, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And we sing our next song.
Father, who has ordered all things for our good, grant us faithfulness and patience as we endure the evil around us until we rejoice at Christ's coming at the end of time. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I mentioned before, there is not a sermon, so we'll talk about the lessons. Um, as we talk about Isaiah 44, uh, there's some rhetorical questions there. What are they? Now you do have to give me answers. Show me another God. Who is this God? Who is like me? And it's like I said, it's a rhetorical question because the answer is no one. There is no one like our God. No one that could do the things he does. It's done the great things. It's kept all his promises. The promise is to always be with us. He sent his only son to die for us. He rose from the dead and he's coming back again. When is he coming back? Soon. Yeah, soon. Soon and very soon. And so we look forward to that day, and then we'll talk more about that in the next lesson. Anything else stand out to you uh, there in Isaiah 44? As we think about the end of time, and I don't think we dwell on it, I think we know what's happening, right? There's signs of that. Um, but what's the key phrase in verse 8 that helps us as we fear not? I wonder how many times Jesus said that in the scriptures. I don't have that off the top of my head. Maybe you got a Google for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the fear not, how, and especially after the resurrection, right? Every time Jesus stepped into the room with the disciples, what was his first words? Fear not. And so that's what he tells us too. Even though we see the signs of his return and things seem to get worse and worse, he says, fear not. Uh, don't be afraid. I told you, I'll be with you. I told you these things will come and don't worry about them. Just simply trust in me, our God who is compared to a rock. There is no one like him. So we are to declare him and, and tell others about him. That's what we're to do. Anything else stand out to you in Isaiah 44? It's appropriate we sing that last song, right? How great is our God? Because there's no one greater than he is. So let's trust in him with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Amen? Amen. Okay. Romans 8, please, Leonard. The epistle reads is from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is, it, what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, Romans 8. I bet some of you have this as one of your top ten chapters in the Bible. I know it's one of my top ten chapters in the Bible. And um, this section of Romans 8, the first paragraph tells us what, what's happening as we, we see the end times happening. What does it tell us? Things aren't good. Uh, and how would that make us feel? What's it, com- what's it compared to this, this ending? Childbirth. I cannot experience that. I'm still expecting. Uh, I think they're triplets maybe now. Uh, but uh, but uh, it, uh, for those who have experienced childbirth, once it starts, it doesn't stop, right? Until there's a baby. And... Um, so here it's starting, and uh, you know we're in this troubled world, and it's groaning. Sometimes the groaning is seen in uh, natural disasters. I don't know what's left to burn in Canada personally, but uh, you know we keep getting all the smoke from there, right? Uh, and we see people that have diseases and illnesses, that have accidents, uh, sudden deaths, uh, all these things that trouble us. And the Holy Spirit says for us in those spirits, and as we groan, sometimes inwardly, that we should do it with what? What's the key word at the end of that first chapter, or that first paragraph? Patience. Everybody have a good dose of patience? You know the problem with patience? It takes so long to get. Right? Uh... You know, one of my, my favorite prayers is, Lord, give me patience. And give it to me now. So, uh, patience takes a while as we go through the process. The, you know, the childbirth starts. It doesn't stop until there's a baby. Um, creation's moaning. Uh, we see the things that are happening. But yet we have hope that does not disappoint us. Um, you know, hope that we can see is science, right? It's facts. But as Christians, hope that we don't see is faith. Trusting that God will do what he says he's going to do. And he's been true and constant his whole life, our whole lives, our whole existence of the world, all mankind. And God will not let us down. So as we see a troubled world, and we're supposed to wait in patience, the second paragraph of this section tells us to do what? Holy, Holy Spirit help us through it. And in fact, he'll give us what? What's the, what's the thing the Holy Spirit helps us do? Pray, pray. Yeah, he gives us faith to pray. And you don't even need to use words. In fact, what, what's it described there? Um, getting kind of like the, the parts of the happens with the, the earth as it's getting ready for the end of times. We too have groanings. Um, uh, many a time, uh, last Wednesday was a special day. Um, I've been ordained as a pastor for 31 years. Uh, someone sent me a card on Monday. I was having a bad day Monday. And this family from uh, uh, St. John's Pierce uh, didn't make my 30th anniversary last year. And so they remembered my 31st anniversary of my ordination this year. And the card happened to come on Monday. What a good day for that to come. Uh, It was wonderful. Uh, But in those 31 years of ministry, oftentimes as we care for each other and as our hearts hurt and we see bad things happen and we sorrow and grieve, um, can you get the words out? To pray? No, the Holy Spirit helps us in our groanings. And in fact, um, one of my favorite things to talk about, sometimes when we can't get the prayers out, what comes out are tears. And tears are just 
silent prayers, right? And so uh, those, are, those are special communications with God. The Holy Spirit helps us. Um, you know, I, I get asked to pray a lot. And it's like, well, pastor, you pray so good. Well, I'll pray anyway. You don't need to butter me up. <laughs> you know, and, and I haven't counted in those 31 years how many times I've prayed for different events. But if you prayed as much as I have, you could do it publicly pretty well, right? And, and actually, the challenge is for us as Christians is to pray often, right? What's, what's the scripture in Thessalonians? Pray without ceasing. It's like breathing. I, I have to, every thought, everything I see, um, one of the joys I have, and I learned this in a high school retreat I went on to in Yuma, Arizona, um, you know, praying with open eyes. And that's really good to do if you're driving. Make sure you pray, pray with open eyes. And... Um, but that everything you see to be in communication with God, whether it be a see a sunrise or a sunset, or thank God that that person pulled out in, you, in front of the person in front of you and not in front of you, uh, or someone just missed you in a car, or um, you know that test result came back good, uh, whatever it may be, you know say thank you God, uh, and just be in communication with Him, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability. To pray. So that's what that last paragraph in Romans 8 talks about. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us as we wait for the end of this troubled world. Anything else stand out to you or any stump the pastor questions that I can ask other pastors in attendance? Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> all right. Got it all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand. As we uh, read responsibly the gradual and verse for the season. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. Oh, how unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Alleluia. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been foundation of the world. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the king children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the, close, is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I got to write my newsletter article this week, and I wrote it on the gradual, so I won't spend a lot of time writing on that, but it's, it's been a pretty powerful, emotional week for me as I got to go back to St. John's Arnold, where I did my vacancy, and and uh, attend a good friend's funeral. Um, 
also to visit our son Jack's grave and see the plots where my wife and I will be buried someday, um, getting ready for that time when God calls us home to heaven. And that's what uh, the gospel reading is about, is when God calls us home to heaven. Um, like I said, the, the Romans 11 gradual is what Pastor Steve Banke preached at my son Jack's funeral. So that'll be in the newsletter article, so I'll give you a reason to look at it, okay? So it's kind of perky up there a little bit. But the, the good news about the gospel reading, as we talk about it, is uh, Jesus talked in parables. Uh, what, anybody remember what I, what I call a parable? What's a good definition of a parable? Good, thank you. You've been to a few of my Bible classes, haven't you? Uh, earthly story with a heavenly meaning uh, is how Jesus talked to them. Uh, last week it was about the sower. Uh, and, of course, now we have uh, Jesus here again talking about another sowing situation. And, uh, and it seems like uh, the, the servants aren't very respectful of their, of their, of their master there because they say, what kind of seed did you get, God? You know, where did you get the seed that had weeds in it, too? And, um, and, of course, where do the weeds come from? The devil, Diablo. Yeah. And so he sows those in there uh, after the good wheat is sown. And um, they have to then see them come up and say, oh, there's weeds and there's good fruit right next to each other. Kind of like living in the world, isn't it? Uh, weeds and, and, and uh, wheat growing up together. So it wasn't the seed that was bad. The enemy did this. Uh, one of my favorite songs, The Devil is a Liar, right? Uh, one of these days we're going to see him burn. And that's kind of the, the, the follow-up so part of this, the second uh, paragraph, right? So, like I said, the comfort of uh, Jesus in Matthew 13 is not only does he tell us the parables... But he gives us the answer to him, so we don't have to guess. So what does this mean? Oh, I have to scratch my head and figure out what the parable of the weeds is all about. He tells us, right? Straight out tells us. So what's he tell us? What's, he, what's the parable of the weeds, weeds all about? What, somebody want to summarize that? Say it again. See, we are sown by the enemy, and can we get rid of them? They don't have Roundup for that, I'm sorry. Uh, so, right now we're sitting in a field of wheat, right? All us believers in Christ. Um, but when we go out there, out of these four walls, we're, what else is going to be out there? There's some weeds. So the wheat grows up, the wheat, weeds grow up, they grow up together. And uh, God's called us to be faithful, to bear fruit, uh, that we heard last week in the parable uh, of the sower. And here he's reminding us, as we go through life, there's going to be weeds. Right? And we know that according to uh, Genesis chapter 3, right? The theme verse from Monsanto and DuPont and all the other pesticide and herbicide companies. Uh, because of sin in the world, what happened? Adam and Eve, what? Kicked out of the garden. And what were some of the punishments? What was the punishment for Adam? You have to work the soil now. God's just not going to provide for me. He's just going to have to gather it. He's going to have to work and sweat. Anybody going to do that this week? Thinking so. Uh, we're going to do that with the youth in uh, San Antonio. So we're going to sweat even more than you guys. <laughs> You think you want to sweat. Um, but yeah, so he's got to, we're going to have to sweat now. And we have to, you know, and so we have to, you know, in our work as farming, we, you know, we try to get rid of weeds and, and do spraying and herbicides and, and, and fungicides and all those fun things. Uh, but <coughs> Jesus says, don't worry about the weeds. Kind of goes back to the, the epistle lesson, right? Have patience. <coughs> And he's saying here, don't worry about the weeds. You're going to see the weeds all around you. And they're going to trouble you because who sowed them? Diablo. And he's there trying to take our joy away. But our focus is to keep looking up. That's, that's what when, when the things that are growing do. They look up to the sun, right? Uh, anybody ever been up in South Dakota and see field or Kansas and see fields of sunflowers? Sunflowers are awesome. Sunflower fields. 
Because what do they do? They follow the sun. It's just an amazing phenomenon to see a whole field of uh, plants looking at the sun. And wheat, what are we to do? Keep looking at the sun. Let the sun feed us, nurture us. The rains come down. The sun helps us sweat, I mean grow. Uh, and uh, so that's what God has promised us. The parable of the wheat and the weeds. Uh, and again, there's that end time anticipation, right? How does the parable explanation end? Someday, what's going to happen? Harvest, yeah. So the good... I don't know if it's good news. I don't know if we would take joy in this or not. It's just a fact. But the devil's going to lose, in case anybody's wondering. I don't want a spoiler alert here. Uh, the devil's going to lose, and all the weeds are going to be gathered. And where are they going to go? They're going to go south. San Antonio, no. Uh, they're going to go to H-E double hockey sticks, right? It's going to happen. It's a place. It's gonna, they're going to burn. And where are we going to go? The wheat. Heaven. Sun of righteousness will shine. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Any questions, comments, thoughts on Matthew 13? Parable of the wheat and the weeds. Yeah, the weeds kind of weigh us down, don't they? They're kind of a obstacle. Take our moisture, they suck, sucking, they take more, yeah, nutrients, and so yeah, yeah. What's weed? Yeah, because it's sometimes disguised, right? But isn't the interesting part about this is that the the farmer tells the servants. Don't pull up the weeds. Why? Yeah, some of the wheat would get hurt. Or oh yeah, that too. I was thinking the same way, Don. You know, if there, you know, can God make weeds into wheat? Sure, He can. He's God. We just talked about that in the Old Testament lesson, right? You know, is there another God like Him? Absolutely not. He can do whatever He wants. If He chooses to turn weeds into wheat. He can do it. And so uh, we're to continue to be wheat to have influence on the weeds. Yeah. That's good thoughts. Right. So part of being in worship is being fed. You know, getting your, uh, 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 what's that? What's the green stuff you put on, the, on your plants? Fertilizer, but I mean, there's a term. Miracle grow, right. So here's the place for miracle grow, right here. Uh, come and get your miracle grow and be fed by the Word of God. Uh, be strengthened, be nurtured. Uh, maybe even call it uh, uh, pesticide or herbicide, uh, you know, being reapplied. So we can be weed resistant. <laughs> uh, you know, so that when the end of the world comes and, and God does bring. Uh, Roundup uh, for the weeds uh, will be prevented from d dying with the weeds, but get to experience the sun and the righteousness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's a good thought, Jackie. So some weeds really aren't weeds, but they look like weeds to us. Or to others, yeah. So we need to see them the way God sees them, right? Yeah. Good thought, I didn't thought of that. That's true. Right. Right, right. Right, right. We're not going to be able to get rid of it this side of heaven. No. So weeds will always be there. That's, that's the thing that always amazes me when I do my, my, my farming, my, my yard. Uh, you know, that every spring, 
even though I put weed and feed in the, in the spring, you try to get rid of all those dandelions. What comes up first in the spring? <laughs> the dandelions. Like, I got rid of you guys last year. Why are you bending back here? Um, same thing. Weeds are going to keep coming as the harvest takes place. Um, yeah, and God's continuing to do a harvest through each of you and through us as a congregation and those who are also listening and watching uh, where God has placed them in his, his, his garden and his field, uh, his kingdom. Anything else? Any questions? Good, good comments. Thank you. Right. Right. How many mothers love the bouquet of dandelions that they get in their garden? Right, right. So, There's even, even yeah, and even some friends make wine out of them too. Uh, <laughs> dandelion wine. So, yeah. So, the, yeah, so God can make something that looks, that's a weed, look beautiful too, right? Or, you know, and, and be, like, eyes be older. Yep. That's a good point. So, the, again, summarize. Weed got, wheat got planted, weeds came up. He said, leave them to grow. They'll get taken care of at the harvest. When's the harvest coming? Soon. Uh, and who's in charge of that? Jesus. So guess what? Pressure's not on us, right? We're just supposed to be faithful wheat. And God will take care of getting rid of the weeds at the end of time. And... We're looking forward to the time when we'll be in the son of the kingdom and his father. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let's continue our worship with our hymn of the day, Heart the Voice of Jesus Calling.
we'll make confession of our faith this day in the Holy Spirit, the third article, that talks about the one who plants the seed and keeps the seed in the faith. In the third article, the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith in the Holy Spirit, who intercedes for us. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, He daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. That day He will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. When we look at the storms gathering around us, many people are in dire straits. Let us pray for them, for the church around the world, and all people in their various circumstances. For the human powers that be, that God would enable them to make and administer laws, to order society within their borders, and establish peace across them, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Heavenly Father, as we pray in hope. For the disenfranchised and homeless, the forgotten and oppressed, the unemployed and disheartened, that God would protect and defend them, open doors of opportunity for them, and move them to rely on him for all their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Heavenly Father, as we pray in hope. For those near and dear to us, in their illnesses, anger, grief, despair, especially, Lord, we lift up to you uh, the family of Mort Grosch, uh, who passed away. Comfort his family as he has his funeral tomorrow. Uh, we ask you, Lord, also be with those who have physical ailments, uh, relieve them of their pain. Uh, for those who have mental illness and are suffering from the consequences of that, be also with our missionary, Chelsea Irwin in Czech Republic. Bless the Tim Reichs family as he attends seminary in St. Louis. Bless our ministry planning and their, the core teams and directors as we seek your will to guide our congregation in the future. Uh, we ask for comfort for the Liable family, family and friends. We have Sidney Carlson, Patsy Hurlbert, who was recently hospitalized and is home recovering. We have Bob Lowski. We have all who battled cancer, including Jolene Lichty, Barb Weeding, Tracy Hedlund, Rachel Colliff, Elise Kelly, Rick Larson, Beth Martinson, Carolyn Stewart, Alan Bentz, Ann Koopman and Jolene Lichty's aunt, who was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer, as well as those we name in our hearts, Lord, before you now. We pray that, God, you would visit, relieve, strengthen, and renew them according to your gracious plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Heavenly Father. For those who tend flocks and till the soil, who provide transportation and manage shops, who provide protection in their communities and defense of their nation, and who respond to sudden emergencies and work to increase health and well-being, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Heavenly Father, as we pray in hope. For ourselves and all who come to the Lord's table in true faith, that God would bestow on us his forgiveness, life, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Heavenly Father, as Lord, we pray in hope. We pray also for those who have birthdays in our parish. Be with uh, Gary Momberg, Gloria Rugi, Rodney Stoliker, A.J. Wilson, Nadra Parks, Shelby Volden, and Brindley Starosik. We also lift up to you those who celebrate the anniversary of their vows made to you and each other. We ask your blessings upon Adam and Jean Kurtz. May they grow more in love with each other. Lord, hear them. And uh, whatever other prayers, Lord, that you know what we need to pray for? We pray for our synod and convention this week. We pray for our youth as they attend a youth conference in San Antonio. 
grant them safety and blessings on their trip. Uh, bless that your will be done for our church in the future. And so these and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Normally during this time we collect the offerings. The offerings are being collected at the back of church. You can drop that off uh, on the way out this morning if you haven't already dropped them in. Also, this is uh, the fourth Sunday, so this is uh, mite uh, door offerings. So there'll be a door offering for mites as we continue to support missions through the Lutheran Women's uh, Missionary League, both in Nebraska North District and the National LDML. Other announcements. Uh, a couple of ministerial things to, to share with you. Uh, the one here in O'Neill is tonight at 6.30 at Word of Life Church. Uh, there'll be a prayer uh, gathering of Christians here in our community to banish the darkness. And there's been a lot of sad and tragic and difficult things happening in our community. And uh, the ministerial thought that it'd be good that we get together to pray and ask the Lord to strengthen us. And, uh, and the devil has to flee where the Lord's name is called upon. So let's gather together tonight at 6.30 over at uh, Word of Life Church. Also, uh, maybe you've heard about the, the movie Sound of Freedom. Um, that's going to be playing at the Lynch Theater next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And the Boyd County Ministerial uh, will be paying for half the cost of those tickets. So all tickets will be half price, hoping that uh, we'll have sellouts every night uh, next weekend for the movie uh, Sound of Freedom, uh, dealing with uh, uh, trafficking uh, and a true story about a, a federal agent that um, was part of that. He just happens to be Jesus. No, it's Jim Caviezel, uh, not Jesus himself. Uh, but uh, the guy that played him in the movie is in that movie too. So hopefully many of you will get to see Sound of Freedom. Anybody seen it yet? Um, I know my folks have, and they thought it was really, really good. Um, those are my two things. Uh, I know Jolene wants to speak. Do you want to do that now? Okay, you ready? Okay, we'll do it anyway, okay? We don't have time. <laughs> I will give you plenty of time to prep yourself. You're good. It's good. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I'll leave it on the stand. I had to write my notes so I didn't stray off. But um, I want to thank you so much for the door offerings that you did for me on behalf of me. Um, it was very touching, and I appreciate the support. And I also appreciate the support um, of people gathering and putting in the wooden box out back. Uh, the Iowa bottles and cans and plastic bottles. Um, I, it brings me joy to do it, and actually I've kind of been able to be a missionary to the places I take it, and if nothing more, show kindness. Um, something that was very, I don't know, visual for me is someone had dropped off uh, many, many bags of cans and for a split second, it looked like people down on their knees praying. And um, I, it just made me feel like I was visually seeing the prayer warriors from all of you and, and others beyond here that pray for me. And I appreciate that. Um, I want to tell you a, a little event. That's why I really came up here. This is a short sermon. <laughs> um, in March of this year, they changed my chemo. And it became an oral chemo daily. And the unfortunate part, it had a horrific copay. And um, I, I explored any resources I could find and um, programs and whatever to no avail. And uh, Friday, I received a call that I qualified for assistance. So um, that month as well, when, when I went for my checkup, I have eight tumors. I have five in my liver and three in my spine. First time ever, none of them had grown in five years. So I think God wants me around for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's wheat? No, wheat, wheat. We'll, we'll call it wheat. Yeah. We'll call it wheat. I'm on the wheat side for <laughs> You're now. on the wheat side. Okay. Some days. All right. All right. But it taught me two lessons that I really want to tell you about. Um, I feel like 
by them not growing it, saying, I still have a lot of work to do on his behalf, and I'm honored. Um, and I want to tell you as well, you know, you all are disciples, you all are missionaries, and don't be afraid or fear that you're not qualified. Notice God's nudges, they call them. And what I've experienced isn't this big, boomy, you know, I uh, can't think of the actor that talks from the sky. Um, James Earl Jones. There we go, James Earl Jones. It's, it's nudges, it's intuitions, it's instincts sometimes. And you, you can't reason it, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go there. And uh, it's, you, you will be pleased. Um, point being, pleasing God is much more powerful than trying to please mankind. Satan wants us to please mankind. Kind of like she debate. pointed at me when she said that. <laughs> well, it's all <laughs> oh, encompassing. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and as it says in the Bible, and quote me, is it Hebrews? Do not conform to man's ways, but conform to mine, which are good and pleasing and perfect. And it's such a great payoff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it also taught me a second lesson from having such a wonderful checkup and then blessed Friday with assistance besides all that you do for me, um, is to trust God and turn it over to him. And unfortunately, patience. We like to grab it back because he's not doing it quick enough. And I have this little plaque somebody gave me, and it says, Hello, good morning, this is God. I will be taking care of your day, and I don't need your help. <laughs> and I know it's hard to, to turn it over to him, and I think sometimes my preference would be to clean a toilet because uh, I don't like doing that. But I want you to believe, and, and I, you know, um, sometimes when I'm struggling and um, really fighting a lot of things, I just say Jesus over and over. And I can just feel Satan kind of taking a U-turn. I can tell you personally, and from what I learned on Friday, God's timing is perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank our missionary for sharing. Give a PS. Sorry, I have one more thing. I wrote this little pamphlet, sometimes I call it a bathroom reader, in 2017 when I thought it was cancer free before it metastasized. And so I've got a whole bunch back there, and Mr. Kopecky can point to you, point to where they are if you want one. Absolutely free. It talks about faith and the acronym for faith. I'm in the middle of um, editing it to have it republished, so um, feel free, and um, I, hope, I hope it brings light for you in some way or the other with life's trials. Thanks, Julie. So yeah, she's, uh, we, one of the actions of the Voters Assembly was to say we wanted to support her as our local missionary, and uh, I, I have some news for all of you. You are all our local missionaries. So uh, wherever God has planted you, uh, sprout and grow and share the love of Jesus uh, for people that are longing to hear it, uh, just as Jolene does and has done a great job for us in our congregation to inspire us. And obviously prayer works. Um, you know, she's living proof of that. And um, also the fact that uh, God is rarely early, but never late. Uh, so uh, hold to his promises. So as the offerings are brought forward, then I invite you to please stand, and we will say the Lord's Prayer and have our closing song. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for these gifts. Bless them, use them, multiply them to the glory of your holy name and the furtherment of your kingdom. Amen.
Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You see the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, we say, shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our closing song, 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord.